dwells find that place it is hidden in God find that place it is hidden in God find that place it is hidden in God that's where the stability of your heart is waiting that's where your peace and comfort are waiting. If you find him, you will find rest. If you find him, you will find rest. If you find him, you will find rest. Everything that is out of order in your life is waiting for that place. It is the springs of eternal life. If you find it, you find rest. Onde vara da cado se que beliasa. Name is ever great. You are the wisdom of God. You are the wisdom of God. I need your touch in my life. Sweet Holy Ghost You are the wisdom of God I need your touch in my life Sweet Holy Ghost You are the fountain of life I need your touch in my life, sweet Holy Ghost. You are the river of God. I need you drenching all over my life, sweet Holy Ghost. You're the of God you bring your starch in my life I hear the spirit say from the wind to the whisper I hear the spirit say from the wind to the whisper that every time there's a stirring of God's wild wind around you what must end it is the whisper of God in your ears 
so that the instruction of God is written indelibly in your heart with the language of love only your soul understands sweet Holy Spirit sweet Holy Spirit sweet Holy Spirit sweet sweet Holy Spirit thank you for your presence here thank you for your power here thank you for your power here thank you for your power here Eranda Kabadoso Belena Estaka Ayana Jesus Pekonde Brahati Sahale Shanda Kadiata Teku Bali Ambaraso Tiki Shibanati Orendi Gebesa Tabanya Bakose Tishta from deep within us 
Even right now, break forth from deep within us. I see a threshold of sorrow broken. Like a stronghold, the Lord breaks through that rock. I see an ancient fountain of sorrow broken. It has come with a long term bitterness. Fountain of life, sweet Holy Ghost, to you alone, my heart responds. Today, Lord, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus. That you perfect the work that you have begun in us. To you be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus. Now and forever, world without end. Amen. Hallelujah. understood the kind of things that you encounter when you enter under this kind of atmosphere it's called the river of God and the only thing that limits the river of God is your reception that's the only limitation the river of God has when you enter his presence you must let that river carry you if you don't let it it will not take you it won't if it manages to take you without your permission it means that those who permitted the river their currents became too overwhelming so your flesh had to bow that's how first corinthians 13 closes breaks into first corinthians 14 and tells you that when a company of believers arrive at the fountain of the spirit enough to prophesy please listen to this because in 1 Corinthians 13, as you begin transition to 1 Corinthians 14, what you find is that it almost seems like the Bible was establishing the superiority of prophecy over tongues. Right? 1 Corinthians 14, 1. As you transition from 1 Corinthians 13, because 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 10, he said, when I was a child, I speak like a child, I talked like a child, I understood like a child. He said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Then he said that now we see through a glass vaguely. He said, but then we, we will see clearly. He said, now we know in parts. He said, but then we will know as we are known. Then he gets into First Corinthians 14. Look at this. First Corinthians 14. 
So he said, follow out charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather desire that you may prophesy. Look at this. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit? What happens? He speaks mysteries. Verse 3. Look at this. But he that what? Prophesieth speaketh unto men to what? Edification and exhortation and comfort. Listen to this. The man who prophesies does not speak unto men except he has connected to the fountain of God. So this scripture is not the superiority of prophecy over tongues. It is the ultimate arrival at prophecy through tongues. So that when the fountain of the spirit begins to move, listen to me very carefully because I'm going to show you a, a verse of scripture. So that the next time you arrive at this kind of em environment, you know what to do with it. That by the time we are breaking forth in tongues, what's happening is that nobody else is edified. But when tongues arise as a culmination, you begin to hear what the spirit of Christ is praying through you. You must give it a language because the moment you give it a language then it becomes a source of education exhortation and comfort at that point your fountain becomes the vessel from which god is speaking so at this point you are not only speaking to god god is rumbling within you and speaking through you to edification if you read it on, you will find, give me verse 4 and 5, and then I'll cross over to verse 26. He that speaketh in unknown tongues edified, what? Himself. But he that prophesied, what? Edifies the church. Then verse 5. I would that what? No, no, no. I would that what? That means he's not saying this to say you should not speak in tongues. He said, but rather that you ah it is not a choice between two i wish you saw it i would that how many of you all of you speak in tongues but i would above that that you prophesy so that when you speak in tongues you don't arrive there as a comfortable achievement your tongues only becomes an achievement when you begin to and prophecy is actually when that which is spoken in tongues finds a language that becomes edification. And listen to this. Especially for those of you who are psalmists. You, you cannot arrive at such an environment and not participate. Why? Because... Ephesians chapter 5 tells you that you should not be drunk with wine but you should stay being filled with the Holy Spirit singing eh, to yourselves first in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Then he said singing, it graduates into making melodies. So you cannot arrive at a, an environment of the Holy Spirit and not draw down a new melody. And the melody is your transitioning point from that which is mysterious to that which comes into understanding. Look at verse 26. First Corinthians 14 verse 26. I've not started teaching yet. First Corinthians 14 26. How is it then, brethren, when you read the next statement? Stop. stop. Sister Tolu Popola, Popola has a psalm. Everyone has a psalm. Everyone has what? A doctrine. Everyone has a tongue. Everyone has. And everyone has. means when we come together this no longer becomes a matter of specialty it's not a matter of diverse giftings these things become what everyone among us should have everyone should have a psalm 
everyone should have a doctrine or a teaching that means there should be a knowing from the holy ghost that is sitting in your belly so that when i start to teach you will almost think i was writing from your script it's possible in fact it is a type of it you saw this morning Fountain of life, sweet Holy Ghost, unto you my soul responds. Fountain of life, sweet Holy Ghost, it will not come as words first, it will start to rise from within your heart like a melody. are not foolish enough to follow the melody ah today you will see the reason why you don't trust god the reason is because many times when he starts it does not make sense or walking with my wife back from elections yesterday and she began to sing a melody she received from her sleep and when she started to sing it it began to make sense to my spirit so i began to sing it along then she said, I didn't realize that the song is that good. I said, no, it is that your understanding did not appreciate it. You didn't feel like it was good enough. That's normally how the fountain of God dies inside of you. Every time it is you, it is not good enough. You will not let it find expression beyond you. Because there's a fear of insufficiency. We curse that fear. Fountain of life, sweet Holy Ghost, unto you, my heart rejoices. Fountain of life, sweet Holy Ghost. If, if you don't understand it, that's how 30 minutes will have passed and you'll, you'll be thinking let these people hurry up hurry up to where i can stay there till the end of the day i didn't say till the end of the service i can stay singing that till today closes because what has your hurrying up produced that is beneficial for you you can't arrive at the fountain of god and be too organized to dive in. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. But have you ever imagined that people can come to the front of that river and will never dive in? They are watching others dive in and come out refreshed. Then they will tell you that I have hydrophobia. No, this hydro, I don't have phobia in him. If I would die in the Holy Ghost, let me die there. You have to let the wind carry you. But somewhere dedicating Dr. Fanan's baby, the Holy Ghost said to me, from the wind to the whispers. Ah. So I stood and I was wondering, what has the dedication of the baby have to do with from the wind to the whispers? Then I started watching the wind. And he kept ascending in the service until he arrived at the point where he wanted to speak with you personally. But you were too uninterested to hear what he was saying. The Holy Ghost unto you. So look at this. How is it then, brethren, that when you come together, how many of you how many of you? No, read it the way it is in the King James. How many of you? Every one of you has a sound. Every one of you has a doctrine or a teaching. Every one of you has a tongue. Every one of you has a revelation. Every one of you has an interpretation. 
the only thing he said is let everything be done on 25. listen sometimes that's why we say yes in a service sometimes that's why we stand up in a service because if in the midst of the service somebody summed my psalm i wish you heard me how many of you had a psalm how many people had a psalm that means you don't come to service to collect you come with something to give register it in your heart I will not just come to service waiting for the hour of power for the hour when the word of the Lord will come no I will come for service with something to give so that if I prayed in the morning and the Lord gave me a direction when somebody else stands here to speak in the direction of what God has said I should rise up as a witness that that's what the Lord is saying that's my sound that's my doctrine that's my hymn that's my interpretation too many people come to church empty that's why you find services without power not here here services have power i even if you are dead we will force the power in you couldn't have slept last night singing a song then you walked into church do you understand the first day in the evening i sing it that song that israel sang Obrigado, Sikwe Musama Timba. Obrigado. Obrigado, Sikwe Musama Timba. Obrigado. The moment he sang it, everything about me came alive. Because it was my psalm. It's my psalm. They entered my bedroom and collected it. It's my psalm. At that point, you can't control me. I become like a madman. You know why? It's not because I know the song. It's because the Bible says that every joint must supply. Oh. You must know the atmosphere of the spirit. You must know it. You must know it and arrive at the place. Lift up your hands and say to God, Lord, teach me your ways. Just teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. That I may know you. Show me your path. That leads to life. Then I can soar on wings as eagles. Then I can run and not faint. Teach me your ways that I may know you. Show me your path. That leads to life Then I can soar On wings as eagles Then I can run And not say As you pray one more time, pray to your heart Teach me your ways That I may know Show me your path. Show me your path. That leads to life. That leads to life. Yeah, I can soar. I can soar. On wings as eagles. On wings as eagles. Then I can run. Then I can run. Run and not fade. And not fade. Say, then I can run. Then I can run. 
your ways that our humanity will not rob us of you be glorified in the midst of your church in Jesus name and everyone said amen, amen. hallelujah come on I said hallelujah amen. if you have been taught God's ways let me hear you shout an amen. amen if you will do it better next time let me hear you shout an amen, amen. please listen to this before I begin to teach I announced last week um, that our brother Sam God had um, taken upon himself an initiative to register for jam for all of the people from his word in Fan. I think that would be Berkey Ladi local government, right? That's Berkey Ladi -Ladi local government in Fan. While I prayed about it, the Lord expanded the idea. And I asked him to come in and we sat down within the week. And so we've decided that we will not only, he will not only register them for jam, we will tutor them to write it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And while I took my bath this, this morning, I thought to myself that if out of us God can raise five, six people from five, six parts of Plateau State, by next year, we should do it touching every region. And we will do it until the educational status of this state changes. Are you hearing me? I said that so that I can announce that if you are a teacher, there are seven subjects we are going to be covering for them in JAM. Maths, English, Physics, Chemistry, Biology, Literature, and Government. Maths, English, Physics, Chemistry, Biology, Literature in English, and Government. If you teach any one of these seven subjects, please, after this service, wait behind and see Mr. Obioha Adiku Brown. He coordinates that project on our behalf. Amen. We have inaugurated a team on that project. And he's going to coordinate that project on our behalf. In fact, in the midst of it, he said something that I must share with you. He said he's been thinking for a very long time that when the missionaries came to Africa, they came with education. Now that we're going back to them, what are we going with? And, you know, I suddenly began to see that, like I shared with the team this morning, it's not going to, we're not just going to bring them to tutor them. We want to make them wholesome people. There are three dimensions to this particular program. Like I said with the Honorable Sam God, um, there are three dimensions to this. Number one, they cannot write jam and fail. Number two, we will counsel those of them who don't have a future in education and show them where to go so that they can prosper. Number three, no child will be committed to us in those five days and he will live without meeting Jesus. Not one. Not one. Not not one. Amen? So we're, we're designing a robust program in that direction. And I say that to say that many of you who are seated in the house brood over ideas. Don't do it outside of church. Church is God's yeast. We blow up everything. The Bible says the kingdom of God is as yeast that a woman puts in three measures of dough. And when she goes and returns, the entire dough is overtaken by the yeast. Don't catch a wisdom and run it alone. No, no, don't do it. If you share it with us, we'll possibly show you better ways to do it and strengthen your hands to do it. Amen? So now that project is going to be, you know, taken care of by a team of people together with our outreach team as a church so that it becomes a holistic, wholesome program. There's no part of their lives that is untouched. If you like that, let me hear you say an amen. amen. If you don't like it, we'll drive you out of church right now. You're an enemy of the kingdom. Glory to God forever. So please take note, if you have experience in teaching maths, English, physics, chemistry, biology, literature in English, and government, please wait behind and see Mr. Obioha Adiku Brown. The moment we share the grace, 
just go under the, the, the balcony this way and he'll meet you right there. You got it so far. Let me hear you say an amen. amen. All right. Now let's dive straight into the word of God. Are you ready? Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Glory to God forever. I read the entire 12 verses of Psalm 36. And then we will hop quickly to Isaiah 40. Then we will read the scripture in Proverbs chapter 3. And then we'll tie it up and the service will be over. That sounds like 10 minutes. From verse 1. The transgression of the wicked said within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes for he flattered himself in his own eyes if you are there let me hear you say an amen. amen good until his iniquity be found to be hateful the words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit he had left off to be wise and to do good he devised mischief upon his bed he set it himself in a way that is not good he abhorred not evil Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains, thy judgment as a great deep. O Lord, thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of your house. And thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. And in thy light shall we see light. Oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee. And thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me. Let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Let me hear you say an amen. amen. All right. I'm going to read that scripture again out of the Berean Study Bible. There's a BSB version of the Bible. Berean Study Bible. An oracle is in my heart regarding the transgression of the wicked man. There is no fear of God before his eyes. For his eyes are too full of conceit to detect or hate his own sin. The words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful. He has ceased to be wise and well doing. Even on his bed he plots wickedness. He sets himself on a path that is not good. He fails to reject evil. Your loving devotion, O Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains. Your judgments are like the deepest sea. Oh Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving devotion, oh God, that the children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house and give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you, is the fountain of life in your light we see light extend your loving devotion to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart let not the foot of the proud come against me nor the hand of the wicked drive me away there the evil doers lie fallen thrown down and unable to rise let me hear you say an amen, amen. proverbs chapter 3 very quickly proverbs chapter 3 scriptures i'm sure you know I read verse 5, 6. I read from verse 5 to verse 12. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6. In all thy ways, what? Acknowledge him and what will happen? And he will make your paths straight or he shall direct your parts. Oh, I'm still at Berean Study Bible. I was wondering why my Bible was sounding different. Thank you. 
All right, let's go. Next verse, verse 7. Read it out loud. Yes. Fear the Lord and what? Depart from evil. Verse 8, let's read it. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with what? New wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, what does he do? He corrected and even as a father, the son in whom he delights. That means the mark of God's delight is correction. All right. One more scripture, Isaiah chapter 40, and we will put those three together. You know, pastor once told us that it is good to read the word of God and sandpaper your tongue. Isaiah 40, 28. Read from verse 28 to verse 31. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of of the ends of the earth what fainted not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding next verse he gave it power to the faint and to them that have no might what happened he increased strength next verse even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall read verse 31 like believers would yes shall renew their strength yes they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint hallelujah praise the lord now if you have followed me very carefully you will find out that we've been following the trace of fear and the essence of following the trace of fear please listen to this very carefully is to find our inability to restart because it almost seems like God refreshes us continually. But if Isaiah 40 is anything to go by. Listen to this. He said that we will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. Now if we are not weary and we do not faint. We will not need to be refreshed consistently. Even though I have said to you and it remains. As it is with the principle of healing in Revelation chapter 21 and Revelation chapter 22. Listen to this. The Bible says, and the leaves of the trees that grow by the river of life is for the healing of the nations. Listen. That means that in heaven there is healing even though there is no sickness. The leaves of the tree of that city that grows by the river of life is for the healing of the nations that means in heaven there's healing even though there's no sickness that means healing is not god's response to sickness healing was actually a perpetual nature of god that was installed in god before sickness was ever created you will understand the goodness of god in a bit that means god is not responsive every provision you would have ever needed if you failed was placed in God before you ever failed God, I think I'm with the wrong crowd I'm coming I'll look for another side do you understand it that means God does not go to make provision when you fail God is already sufficient in himself in himself is the provision for your failure before you ever fail So that nothing catches God by surprise. Please hold that thought somewhere there. Nothing catches God by surprise. Can you see it? Revelation 2 verse 2. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. At this point, the new heavens and the new earth have come. So which nation requires to be healed? That means that in God's order of refreshing, he does not refresh you because you are weary. He refreshes you to reset you. I'll say it again. That means in God's order of refreshing, you don't come to the fountain of life because you are weary. 
The fountain of God is a consistent fountain a believer runs to. Not because he is tired. Because in that fountain is God's reset for the believer. So listen to this so that you can understand. Everything that God created, he created, the Bible says, with fruit bearing seed. That means everything he created, he created to continue steadfastly in producing and reproducing itself. Please follow me. All right. So God created everything to reproduce itself. Now the process of that reproduction takes out of what is existent to create what does not exist. You remember I said to you two weeks ago, I said when God was going to create the woman, he did not go somewhere to create the woman. He created her out of the man. That means God made the man and the woman the same day. But two of them were living in one container that was a man. Listen, right? God created the man and the woman the same day. But two of them were living in one container that was fully a male man. Everything a woman was, was locked into one rib. But notice, Pastor Atta, that the Bible said, and God took of the rib of Adam and out of it, Ah, no, no, no. He took the rib of Adam and closed off the flesh instead. That means what is taken from you in a perfect state needs to be replaced. I'll try another side. I'll try another side. So the process of replacement did not come because man fell. The process of replacement or refreshing comes because man is fruitful. That means every man who bears fruit becomes a candidate for God's refreshing. Listen to this. The first thing I want to do today is I want to disabuse your mind from running into his presence because you are tired. Listen. You will now understand why we kept singing I, I am a friend of God. I don't run to my friend when I'm tired. I don't run to my friend when I'm weary. I can run to my friend when I'm tired, but I don't run to him because I'm tired. I run to my friend because, Lord, I delight myself in you. That means that the process of refreshing is supposed to come out of a delight for God, not out of a tiredness for life. Oh. I will preach it in another church. They will understand it faster. Did you hear me? That's why you cannot play with the routine of going into God's presence. I use the word routine consciously and very responsibly. The reason is because when there's no problem, you treat the presence casually. Uh, when there's no problem, if you manage to pray in the morning, you wake up and say, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you because you are always providing for us. We thank you because you go to you. We thank you because you keep us. We thank you because you bring us back. We thank you because, uh, Father, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Anybody that does not have, give them amen. Does anybody know that prayer? You will find out that it almost seems like God does not have the heart of a believer until the believer is in trouble. The only thing that forces our devotion and compels our attention is and when my heart is overwhelmed. When we start singing down, we hold our chest. Yesu yafi anapa waduka Gaya yes Gaya yes Gaya 
Now, when we start singing songs like Gaya wa Yesu, all our pity comes alive. And then our emotions are triggered. Listen to this. There is no true devotion that does not engage your emotion. Mm. That means when you wake up in the morning, your greatest delight should be to see his lovely face. That is not supposed to be a product of having a problem. That is supposed to be a product of fruitfulness. So you will notice that even before man fell, God made so that in the cool of the day, every day, God showed up in the midst of the garden because part of the basic essence of divine fellowship is divine restoration. That means restoration is not for what you lost mm. restoration in God's design is supposed to be for the energy you used to fulfill God's purpose because like I said earlier if Isaiah 40 is anything to go by and if Isaiah 40 is something that we must arrive at believing then we must believe that a day is coming and now is when we will run and not be weary. When we will walk and not faint. Hey. No, 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 no. I thought, I thought somebody heard me. That means God is not waiting for the day that my soul will break. God is not waiting for the day that my body will be tired. Oh, did you hear Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 and 7? Verse 6 said, and lean not on your own understanding. Said, 6 said, in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Then he told you that the direction that comes from God will be healing for your navel and marrow to your bones. The navel is the initial point of transfer of life. The marrow is the center of the production or regeneration of life. That means that when health comes, it targets your navel and your marrow. That means God does not heal you because you fell sick. God does not refresh you because you are tired. He refreshes you because you produced. Konde balataye I would rather take the refreshment that comes from being productive than take the refreshment that comes from being tired. Are you following me? That means, listen to this, this is a major blow on Satan. This is a major blow on Satan. If you understand the things we have dealt with, as we speak about fear, you will know, you know, my wife was telling me when we went back home on Tuesday. That in the midst of my teaching, Pastor Nat put his hand on his head, say, well, yo, daddy don't finish Satan. Because what do we see on Tuesday? There is no devil anywhere. If you don't know, if you don't believe it, listen to Tuesday's message. You will agree. Satan is only as powerful as the permission you gave him. And your fear is the permission that you give to Satan to act in your life. If you receive sufficient knowledge of the goodness of God, enough to ignore the workings of Satan, nobody will tell him to pack his things and leave him. <laughs> Let me give you an example. So Tuesday I finished teaching. Some of you didn't know that when I was going down these stairs, I seem like somebody should carry me. Every part of my body had pains. Everything about my body told me, talk, it has come. I went home. I told my wife, I need to rest. I slept and I woke up with a fever blister here. And I said to my wife, I'm not sick. I cannot be. I know that old devil. He only came to say to me, I am here. And I told people yesterday, he does not exist. 
here I am, not a tablet. It's simple. Because there's no devil anywhere. Please understand that we're not denying the existence of Satan. We are disarming his ability as far as a Christian is concerned. A Christian is outside the jurisdiction of Satan. I wish you heard me. A Christian is outside the jurisdiction of Satan. Where did we pick it from? Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. For as much, for chapter 2 verse 12. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, himself likewise took part of the same. So that through death he might destroy. Oh, so that through death he might destroy not suspend not disarm through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is so that you cannot put another name there the bible filled it for you that is the devil for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through this he might oh Kai, where are the Christians in this church through death he might him that had the power of death so that you will not say it's a spirit from your village the Bible says that is that means the day I believed Christ died for me, Satan, as far as my account is concerned, is destroyed. <laughs> I cannot believe you as a born again Christian under the yoke of what Satan can do. I cannot. I cannot. I can't live in confusion. I can't live in failure. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot live in lack. Listen, I might not be super rich, but my provision is in God. To deny my provision is to deny the fatherhood of God. Is anyone hearing me? Well, somebody will say to me, Pastor, I'm born again, but this has not been my experience. It has not been your experience because the thief cometh not. But for to steal, to kill and to the, to the degree to which you have refused to believe what God has done for you, that thief will steal from you. Somebody shall destroy. The Bible says that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is who? The devil. It has not finished. See where you come. And deliver them who? Through what? Stop. That means Satan who holds death is the one God destroyed. That's the master of death. The one that told death, go and chop that one. God did not destroy the death. He destroyed the master. He said his reason is so that he can deliver them. The Bible didn't say who threw death. That means when Satan comes around blessing. What's he looking for? He's looking for fear. And if he finds fear, he has found who he can put under bondage. Look at this. And to deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime. That means you can choose to live all of your life under bondage. Even though the owner of the bondage has been destroyed. That means it is an insult on the sacrifice of Christ. For me to permit Satan, not through death, through fear. I wish you heard me. Oh, Pastor X, you know this song? I will not be afraid of feet. I will not be afraid. 
I will not be afraid, oh Lord, for your love washes away my feet, for your love washes away my feet. Please listen to this. I need to get it. I brought you this way to show you that every dominion of Satan needs fear to operate. Please hold that somewhere because you are going to need it now. And you remember that I said to you throughout scripture what destroys fear is trusting in God. And what is the basis for trusting in God? We read in Psalm 36 verse 7. Put it on the board. We read in Psalm 36 verse 7 and Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 and 7. You see how sweet it is? Psalm 36 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 and 7. How excellent is your loving kindness, O God? Therefore, now I want to see it. That means until the sons of men consider your loving kindness excellent, they cannot put their trust in you. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. That means, and I said this in closing on Tuesday for those of you who are in church on Tuesday. And I begged you to come to church on Tuesday. So, try, try. Alright? Because I'll continue this teaching again on Tuesday. Listen to this. I said this in closing on Tuesday. That the problem that men have with trusting God is that God has a will. You see, you are sitting on a chair, relaxed. This week, we have to fix 97 of these chairs. 97. So some of you, you need to go to the gym so that you can save our chairs. That was a joke. But it's okay. You didn't get the joke, so it's all right. Let me move on from there. Let me just suppose that the joke was dry, okay? Uh -huh. Now follow me. You came into church. The ushers pointed you to a chair. You went there. You didn't check the leg. You did not check his strength. You sat down. You will come out from that place you have never stopped to do the road that you are walking on like this and check under you come out of your house and climb the road whose foundation you have never checked never have you ever thought if this road will fail the reason for your trust in these things I just mentioned is that they don't have a wheel so they cannot shift they can't decide to be there today and not there tomorrow. If they are kept there, they remain there until they are shifted from there. Your problem is with the one that can shift it. Your problem is not with it. I got to illustrate this one. You need to get it. Apostle, if you grew up well, you will remember that in primary school, we dealt with people's trust in their chairs. Because you will come to your chair to say, if you grew up well, if you grew up well. Uh, do I have a few people in church who grew up well? If you grew up well, you will enter class. And your friend who knows how confident you are about your chair. When, they, when we get up, good morning, sir. We are happy to see you. God bless you, sir. Even if I tell apostle to do it, he will not do it. He knows my anointing can destroy. Do you understand it? Then your friend pulls back your chair. Then you go in faith. Complete faith. The way you would sit down any day. Only to arrive there and find out that the chair is not there. So you continue your journey to the floor. Now notice, the moment that failed, look at, oh my diga la parasai. The moment that failed, the next time you wanted to sit down, you checked. 
You checked again, you checked again until you realized it was stable, then you stopped checking. Your problem is not with the chair. Your problem is with the one who can remove the chair. So the moment you realize that God has a will, you suddenly are thinking that he changes like shifting shadows. So every time they say to you to rest in God, you are suddenly thinking, what if God decides today? So the psalmist said in Psalm 36 verse 7, he said, because your loving kindness is excellent. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you excellent is your name. transitions from being a song to being the declaration of your heart because if your heart cannot say your loving kindness is excellent what happens is that every time God is involved you start to suspect him listen to this this one is going to bless you and many times this does not happen because God has failed You will remember that I've told you a million and one times that you must not underestimate the scar, the effect of unanswered prayer upon your soul. Because many times when it seems like your prayers are not answered, it leaves a taint of mistrust in your heart against God. But I came to bust your bubble today and say to you, many times your distrust of God does not even come because of unanswered prayer. What prayer did Adam have unanswered that he went to hide? Uh. I'll come again. What prayer did God not answer in Adam that made that? Adam said, I heard your voice walking in the garden. And I, am af I was afraid because I am naked. That means, what makes man run away from the presence of God is not unanswered prayer. It's nakedness. Our nakedness makes us feel like we're not good enough for the God who is seeking us. I said again. So naturally, because the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, listen to this, made us achievement driven. You know, the joy and the pride you feel when you achieve something. When we say, oh my God, uh, okay, very good example, and yet a good announcement. One of our sons in House of Judah, Ugo, okay, okay, who has been in Mina, just graduated with a first class in mechanical engineering. And not from a private university. I don't have a problem with private universities. There are a few of them are uh, noble. Are you following me? He went to FUT in Mina and graduated with a first class. I'm waiting for him to come back. I'll take him out for a fatherly lunch. Listen, the reason is because people need to know that we also have what it takes to say you have made us proud. But guess what? The reason why we pursue many of those things is because our approval comes when we have something to present. 
we feel worthy only when we have something to bring so our minds do not understand a God who is asking us to come with nothing to bring and what we don't know is that he knows that he's the only one who can give us something that we can offer to him listen there's no achievement you will ever attain to that will make you worthy to approach God and you don't need a record of unfaithfulness with God well there's none by the way but you don't need a record of unfaithfulness with God to be afraid of God your unfaithfulness can be a genuine excuse I mean sorry your feeling that God has been unfaithful to you can be a genuine excuse but if you dig deep you will find out that what is making you run away from God is not an unanswered prayer it is that deep in the core of your being you don't feel sufficient is anybody following please follow this this is going to bless you your life is about to restart on a basis because we said to ourselves God cannot ask us to refresh and restart and then we restart where we restarted the previous time no 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 by the law of restoration we should be seven times better so God cannot be asking me to restart what I did before the way I did it before I have to restart with such a productive multiplicative capacity now that makes that in the snap of a finger I will recover sevenfold the things that I lost before so a sevenfold restoration is not just an anointing it's a positioning of the heart we can anoint you for a sevenfold restoration. You will return and do things the way, oh my God. I have to share this with you now. In Mark chapter 2, you will find that scripture speaks about fasting and wine schemes. They came to the Lord Jesus in Mark chapter 2 and they said to him, the disciples of John and the disciples of Pharisees, who, by the way, are not friends. I'll come again. You didn't hear. The Bible says, that they came to Jesus and said the disciples of the Pharisees and the disciples of John fast but your disciples do not fast and John and the Pharisees are not friends it was them he called brood of vipers but they found a uniting point in the subject of fasting then Jesus said two things it's getting hot in here don't worry it will soon reach you Oh, I wish you heard me. <laughs> it was it was soon reach you. It soon get you. Listen to this. Then Jesus said to them, Matthew chapter nine. He said, "The children of the bride chamber cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them." He said, "As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot. Not they will not. Not they should not. They cannot." Listen to this. He said, "But the day is coming." that the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Alright? And when he's taken from them, they will fast in those days. Listen, that means that to fast is to fasten. Come, blessing, come, come, come. Look at this. As long as the bridegroom is with them, they cannot fast. When the bridegroom is taken away from them, they must fast. That means, listen to this. The law of the fast is that at any point you start to feel God far from you. When you cannot hear what he's saying. Oh, you were here last Sunday. You were here last Sunday, right? You remember I told you that Jesus said, it is to your advantage that I go away. Because if I do not go, he will not come. Eh? Good. That means, and I told you that the advantage is not that the Holy Spirit is better than Jesus. The Holy Spirit and Jesus are one and the same. But it is that if Jesus is here with Peter, he is not there with Thomas. But the Holy Spirit can be here with Peter, there with Thomas, the other place with. Now follow. Now, when the bridegroom is taken, it's not when Jesus dies. Because I will send you another helper. Allos Paracletos. One as present as I am. 
that means in every circumstance whether i go to the left or the right i should hear a voice from behind me saying this is the way if i cannot hear that voice i know the bridegroom is far i must that's the reason why a believer cannot start a phase of his life on the basis of presumption one of the things I learned early was I learned to fast. I fasted to fill my jam form. I fasted to resume my investing. So when I got to the university, I had instructions from God as to what fellowship to, to go to and what he wanted to do with me in the university. My five years in ABU were some of the most fruitful years of my life. Why? Fast. Simple. I fasted to fill my jam form. I didn't want to get up and say, I want to read law. I said to the Lord, what would you have me do? And because I could not hear you clearly, I... So you fast to fasten. Oh. Is anybody hearing me? And many times... The demand to fast reveals how important his presence and his voice is to you. You know, I told you we are transitioning to abide. If I don't do it this morning, we'll do it on Sunday. Listen to this. So you fast to fasten. If, if he feels far in any subject, don't stand up and say by faith, I will just do. If he feels far concerning a subject. Let me say something that will help you. And many times, the things that set a cloud or shadow between you and God. The things that set a cloud or shadow between you and God. Is not a matter of the inconsistency of God. But it's the inconsistency of your humanity. Sometimes it is that your understanding is beginning to tower above depending on his voice at that point you will start to feel like he's drawing away no he did not draw away you walked away because the covenant is i will never leave you listen if you don't understand this like this you will think that it is the will of God that makes God unpredictable. You will not know that it is the choices of men and God's attempt to reconcile himself with men that makes it look like God is unfaithful. Follow me, you will see it. Because if we don't solve the matter of unanswered prayer and the suspicion of the unfaithfulness of God in the heart of the average believer, no matter how long we shout, you cannot trust him. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say. No matter how much we shout it, 
if you don't see God as consistent as a chair, the will of God will make you afraid of God. I stopped for somebody. If you don't see God as consistent, when you call him faithful, what you are saying is his consistent. It is faithfulness that makes you sit on that chair. You know that the chair is faithful. So when you come to church, you don't check the chair, you just sit upon it. So when scripture said, trust in the Lord with all your heart, that is what God is trying to draw out of you. So that the moment they say, God, you are too sure of the outcome. Oh, I wish you heard me. You have to return to the place that the moment they say, God, you are so sure of the outcome. Because the moment you become uncertain about the outcome, it becomes difficult to trust. I think it was last Sunday that I did the illustration of the closed eye here, right? Was it last Sunday? I told you, I said, it's not the unknown that makes you afraid. It's the fear of the one who is closing your eyes. If a terrorist closes your eyes and you are hearing Fulani accent on the background, I said it very well. You see, you can see that I'm not drunk. I cannot be. I don't drink anything. Anything. I don't drink. Only Coke and Fanta. Those kind of things. I don't drink. If you are hearing Fulani accent on the background, every step leads you to fear. If it's Ray that carried you and closed your eyes, a baby, follow me. Then he tied your eyes and held your hands. Every step in the direction of what he's taking you to is an increased excitement. If you ever say, baby, have we not reached there? It's not fear. It is that the excitement wants to bust your heart. You cannot wait to see what it is he's leading you there. Look at this. Please follow me. Because today, by the spirit of Christ, we will arrive at trusting God. Oh, I thought I had the people of faith in the house. I said, by the spirit of Christ, we will arrive at trust in God. Today, before we close, you will hear your soul say to God, I trust you. Please follow me. Because don't forget that we have now established that to fast, listen to this, to fast is to fasten. That's the first thing Jesus said there. When you feel him far, then you fast. Because in fasting, you suspend your natural forces, including the suspension of your thought. Listen, it is not a fast if your thought is still active. Kukuma does get up and go eat. It's part of the reasons why charismatics renamed it waiting upon the Lord. The idea is that your mind needs to know that this suspension is until the Lord speaks. If we don't hear his voice, we are not doing anything. So any voice you hear while you are fasting, oh my God. Any voice you hear while you are fasting, you know that you have to check that voice again. I'll, I'll try, I'll try again, I'll try again. When Jesus came out of the Jordan, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The Bible says he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Why do you think he was fasting? Eh? Why was he fasting? I thought that the Holy Ghost led him to the wilderness and stayed with him for 40 days. Then after 40 days, he released him to Satan. No. The Bible says he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness with a singular to be tempted. Look at this. That means the moment the Holy Ghost dropped him there, the Holy Ghost says, see you later. And left. 
So Jesus did not go to the wilderness too fast. The moment he felt the pangs of temptation, he knew that the spirit was far. And he knew that to survive this particular season, I must suspend my natural activities and increase my consciousness of God. So I must recite the scriptures consciously. I must recite his presence consciously. I must recite his promises consciously. Because if I do not increase that consciousness in this season, this way that I'm feeling, And Satan waited 40 days, hoping that his consciousness will abate. Listen to what the Bible says. And afterward, he was unhungered. You didn't hear me. So hunger was not the subject for 40 days. Hunger became the subject after 40 days. That means at this point, his forces had overwhelmed him. Satan waited for that moment when that which is fleshly will become manifest. The moment it became obvious that Jesus was hungry, Satan knew my time had come. But, said, but Jesus already had 40 days of record of being with God. At that point, even his natural mind was too shocked in scripture. If you pressed it, only scripture will come out. So Satan came and said, now you are conscious of your humanity. And the power God gave you in Jordan makes that you can turn this stone to bread. And if you turn this stone to bread, it answers your hunger. Jesus answered him and said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but man will live by every word that proceeds. That means I am not alive because I have eaten or not eaten. That if I become conscious of being alive only because I have eaten, I will take advantage of the power of God to fill my belly. And the power of God is to minister to my world, not to minister to my need. You see, the spirit upon you is not given for you. So when Jesus was hungry, he sent to buy bread. When the people were hungry, he multiplied bread. I wish you heard me. I wish you heard me. I wish you heard me. When Jesus was hungry, he sent disciples with money to buy bread. When the people were hungry, he broke bread and multiplied it. So the power of God upon me is not for me. It's for the people. So Jesus answered Satan and told him, I know you. I just taught you the principle of the fast. That you fast to fasten. But that's not what I was going to say. Let me finish that Mark 2 scripture. Are you, do you understand it? And the Bible said that Jesus said it was necessary for him to go away before they fast. Listen to this. Careful. Then Jesus went on to say, No man sews a new piece of cloth on an old piece of cloth. That if he sews a new piece of cloth on an old piece of cloth, the new piece will put pressure on the old piece and tear the old piece and the tear will be worse than what he was trying to fix. Then he said, no man puts new wine into old bottles. Why? He said, if not, the new wine will bust the bottle. Follow me. <laughs> Look at this. In Jewish culture, what Jesus was actually saying is, Everyone who wants to put new wine puts it in renewed wine skin, not new wine skin. Because there's a process of renewal for old wine skins. The process of renewal for an old wine skin is that the wine mixer will stretch the old wine skin. 
on a board. And that stretch will reveal everywhere the wineskin has cracked. No, let me go back. When you put new wine in a new bottle, what happens is that the bottle ferments together with the wine. And the process of the fermentation of the wine causes cracks on the bottle. Now, when the wine ferments to its stretched excess, because you know the fermentation of wine is not like the fermentation of brukutu. This is plateau. Nobody should pretend that they don't know what I just said. So when the wine ferments, it stretches the wine bottle. So that the wine bottle is fat now by the process of fermentation. But it is fermented to the degree to which the old wine that is in it is fermented. You got that? Let me hear an amen. amen. There's one thing I'm trying to explain here. Why you cannot restart from where you started before. That's all I'm trying to explain right now. You cannot restart from where you started before. If it is the Lord who is calling you to restart, he will call you to restart at a whole new level. Ooh. I thought I was talking to believers. Look at this. So the wine skin is now fat. And even if you have turned out the wine, listen to this. If you pour in new wine, it begins to ferment, but this has already stretched. The moment it begins to ferment, any attempt for the old wine skin to stretch a little further becomes a burst. So what they do is they open the old wine skin and stretch it. When they stretch it, everywhere the crack that comes with fermentation is, they find the balm of Gilead. Balm of Gilead. So they take the balm and they rub on it and they leave it to dry. In that process of drying, just like your skin heals and comes together, you will see how it is healing and coming together. Now you see why God started with refresh. Ooh, when it comes together, Then they, they pull it, they pull it, and they realize that it is as strong as it was in the beginning. Then they tie it up again and pour new wine. Listen to this. This is going to shock you. If they tie it again, they can pour back the old wine in the new bottle. An old wine in a new wine skin will do nothing. It will just take an executive container that is not what... Uh, I wish you were hearing me. That means God can finish the process of your refresh and all you decide to collect is the last set of things. It does not mean the renewal has not been done because old wine does not affect new bottle. It is new wine that affects old bottle. I wish you heard me. Old wine does not affect new bottle. It is new wine that affects old bottle. That means God is not a fool. He cannot invest on renewing and refreshing you only to take what you lost before and give you back if he took the time to renew and refresh you it is unwise investment to pour old wine into you it is only wise that he takes new wine and pours into you now you understand when you stand in his presence and say where well, there is new wine what there is new power there is new freedom the kingdom is here so what do i do i lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today now you know it sounds sweet in a song 
unless you know that the old wine is the old way of thinking uh let me say the one that will shake you the old wine blessing is the old feeling of undeservingness it didn't get to you i'll try it again that means god cannot finish this process with me and i still feel like i'm not worthy because if i still feel unworthy for certain levels of introduction to breakthrough what then happens is that the wine master must take old wine and pour in a new bottle. It won't burst. It will just go back to being the way it was before. I wish somebody heard me. That means I can't finish a process of pain. I cannot finish a process of pain then come back and continue from where I stopped. It's a waste. It's like Job coming out after he saw us. Then he will give birth to the same kind of children he gave birth to before and have the same number of cattle he had before and live in the same kind of house he lived before. It's a waste. So the moment a season begins to end in your life, what happens is that, I said this I think at the cross of our service, God has to send the voice of the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. And he says to you, prepare! Why? Because the next glory you are about to see, you have never seen it before. So you now understand the basis upon which we made the proclamations we made entering to 2024. That 2024 cannot be like the years before it. The reason is because in the years before the Lord stretched us. He permitted Satan to try us. We were stretched on every side. We cannot finish that stretching to go and say where did we stop? No, when you finish that kind of stretching, as you breathe the breath of refreshing, the voice of the prophet has to announce, to say to you, what lies ahead of you is not like what is behind you. God cannot stretch your old wine skin only to reintroduce you to the same places you left. If you understand it, then... If Satan attempts to inflict a season of pain to you, you will be dancing in it. I feel like showing you in scripture. Can I show you in scripture? Romans 5, 1 and 2. Look at this. Romans 5, 1 and 2. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Romans 5, 1 and 2. Put it. Therefore, being justified freely by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we rejoice. Next us, next us, next us. Two, 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 two. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And we rejoice in what? The hope of glory. Right? Next verse, verse 3. This is going to bless you. And not only so. Ooh. So we don't only rejoice in the hope of glory when we are in tribulation. Why? Because we know that tribulation works patience. And patience works experience. And experience works hope. And hope cannot disappoint. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which has been given unto us. So when Satan starts to try you Anytime. Instead of sitting down and wondering, why me? Let Satan see you bust out in rejoicing. Oh, no, 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 no. I wish you heard me. Let Satan see you what? Bust out in rejoicing. Because when he sees that, he knows that you know that God cannot commit his son into Satan's hand only to collect the son the way he gave Satan. 
Oh. Mm, mm, mm. The Bible says, and Jesus returned from the wilderness in the power. Uh, the Holy Ghost took him in. He returned in the power. Mm. There are two different things. The Holy Ghost took him in. By the time he came out of there, he came out anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost. Immediately after you read in scripture, and this be the beginnings of the miracles which Jesus did. That means, Jesus walked into Jordan, a faithful born again Christian, loving the Lord, serving the Lord, or doing no mighty works. Read my lips. Doing no 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 mighty works no not few no because the bible says this be the beginnings that means before then jesus did not form a bed and blow into it it's in some books it's not in the bible are you following me jesus came back in the power of the spirit that means it is a taboo to walk into the wilderness and come out at the same level you walked in. Hold it right there. And let's return to the subject of trust. Are you still here? So, our seasons become wasted because we lack trust. Let me say something I said earlier. But say it a bit more elaborately. So the moment they ate the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they felt the need to generate every thought that has to do with the responsibility for their lives. Mm. Listen to this. E, e, e. I hope that the Lord will bring you proper understanding of this statement. Hard work is a product of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because most hard work is born out of the fear that if I don't work hard, I cannot live well. Your provision is a product of your father not a product of your hard work. If you understand it, you will not work any less. Listen to this. You will work harder, but you will know that your workspace is kingdom interface, not profit making. Listen to me. There should be no time in your life when all you do is driven towards profit. There must be engagements in your life in every season of your life that will not profit you anything but will advance the kingdom of God. And that engagement must get as much, if not more, attention than the engagements that are profitable. If not, mammon still has control over you and his access is fear. I wish you heard me. Listen to this. Both of those statements can be true in one instance. That means my workspace can be more kingdom than profit. And even though it is provi pro producing profit, my greater focus is on the impact it is making, not on the profit it is bringing. Let me add to this statement by saying, and we will ne we have never been as rich as we are about to be. Because you see, that's how fear works. The moment I made those statements, people began to become afraid that this will of God, the same subject, this will of God is about to deprive me of my rights to make money. No. This will of God is about to change how you think concerning money. 
you will suddenly realize that the increase that comes to you in material resource becomes the increase of the fruit of your righteousness, not the increase of your comfort. You will find out that afterwards, every frustration, every monetary frustration that ever hits you is the limitation it gives you in doing good, not the limitation it gives you in living big. You know we have sang it. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm, I'm seeing the fear of lack run away. Don't hold back your own. Don't hold back your own. Don't hold back your own. I see the fear of lack. It leaves you completely. Listen. That's why Psalm 127 said, uh, what does it say? Except the Lord builds a house. Builds the house. They build in vain. That build it. Except the Lord watches over the city. The watchman watches in vain. Then verse 3, no, no, verse 2. He said, it is vain for you to uh -huh, to sit up late. Uh -huh. That means your hard work does not bring you joy. The bread of sorrow is not lack. That means you can have increase with sorrow. That's why the Bible in defining the blessing of the Lord says to you that the blessing of the Lord and adds how you know it came by God is that sorrow will not accomplish. <laughs> Tinda Yesu ya na mulki banda uba Tinda wa wa ya na dare banda It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay Hold on, hold on Listen to me You have to arrive at living a worry-free life What did I just say? You have to arrive at living a worry-free life. Psalm 34. You have to arrive at living a worry-free life. It is vain to rise up early, to sit up late, only to eat the bread of sorrow. Then the Bible added, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. That means the beloved of the Lord knows when work ends and when sleep begins. Listen to this. The beloved of the Lord knows not to take work into sleep. Whatever was not dealt with at work, God will deal with it tomorrow. When I go to sleep, I must sleep knowing. Hey. Ah, yeah, 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 Lord help me, Lord help me, Lord help me, Lord help me. I wish you could read the entire chapter. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's go from verse one. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 34 verse one. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh! magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Next verse. I sought the Lord and he heard me. He delivered me from what? Oh my God. He delivered me from what? How did he do it? They looked unto him. I looked unto him and he lighted me up. My face is not ashamed. This poor man is... Eh? What did he call himself? No, he did not say the poor man. He said this poor man. Cried. And the Lord heard him. And the Lord saved him out of how many? Oh. These are the things that you used to build trust in God. The angel of the Lord. Encamped round about them that fear him. 
and he what? So the angel of the Lord does not just stand around us. He's actively delivering us. Verse 8. Look at this. Oh. Taste and see. That what? No, no, you don't say, you are not saying it like Christians. Taste and see that what? The Lord is good. Blessed is the man that Next verse. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want. Kai. There's no want to them that fear the Lord. See the extent of the no want. Next verse. The young lions do lack. No, no, you need, you need to stop. First. Stop, stop, stop. The young lions do lack. And they suffer hunger. But they... Yes. But they that seek the Lord shall not want what? Come, 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 my dear. Come, look at this. You remember that fasting example? Do you remember that fasting example? Every time you activate your brain outside of the will of God, what it does is that that's what separates you from the Lord and you go seeking. Now, the problem is that the provision of God is with God. Mm. Do you understand it? So every time you distrusted God and started to think, will it happen? Will it not happen? Let me, let me come out go and start to make plans for myself and da ba da ba da. The moment you enter into that fear, like Adam, you will look for one tree and be hiding behind it. And God, the consistent one, listen to this. And God has to remain consistent because he cannot show favoritism. God is a consistent one. So look at this. Like the father of the prodigal, listen to this. This is going to shake your theology a little. God will not live here and go to look for you. He will wait here softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Until you return. Listen to this. Why must God wait for me here? Why won't he go to me there? Don't forget that there is not my astray there is my thinking if he follows me there it means that he has submitted to my thinking and my thinking can never be better than his thinking so it is the goodness of God that makes that God does not follow you to your thinking to prosper it Somebody shout, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Oh, hey, hey. The faith inside that one is very weak. So if anything is not working in my life, listen to this, listen to this. What should I do? I fast. Is anybody hearing me? This year is not the year you wait for us to call for a fast. The word of the Lord has gone forth. It is my season to prosper. Why are things not working? Then I fasting myself to the Lord. And in fasting, what I'm saying. Now you know that fasting is not just fellowship. Fellowship is an important part of it. I will start from there on Tuesday. Fellowship is an important part of this fasting. But the thing is, if I don't fasting myself to him, I will not see the thought that I have sustained that is far away from his thought. And if he goes on to prosper my thought, my ways have now and then been established as higher than his ways. Let me say something that can wound you. Are you ready for it? Listen, if all you are looking for is to make it in this life, I advise you, leave Jesus. Because Satan begins by making you. Then he destroys you. Do you understand it? And by making you here, we mean he will make you make it. 
You will make it quicker if you use the pathway. You remember Psalm 36 where it started from? It's, it's the meditation of my heart concerning the wicked. How that there's no fear of God in his eyes. And he seems to be prospering in the things he has done. The psalmist repeated it in several psalms. How the wicked seems to prosper in the things that they do. And it almost looks like there's no benefit in being righteous. But this is the part of the righteous. The Lord will rather first teach you his ways. But guess what? If you find prosperity in the way of God, it becomes eternal. Nobody can take it from you. What you find in the way of God, no man can take it from you. He, so you now understand when the Bible says, stop for yourself treasure in heaven, where moths cannot eat, rust cannot destroy, thieves cannot break into steel. It means that when a man gets his treasure by God, even if thieves enter his house and clay it, the man's heart is not worried because he knows that the God who made me will reproduce all of this. I can tell you with all confidence, there's nothing I have in my life today that if I lose in three months, I will not make back. And I'm not talking about three months because of God's timing. I'm talking about three months because of God's making. In God's timing, I can make it back in five minutes. God by favor can cause men to pour at my feet far beyond what I lost in one day. But I'm saying by making, by stature, Ilya, if you rob me of everything material I have now in three months, I'll get all of it back by stature. Because to rob me now is to remove my heart. My heart is already bound to Jehovah. And Jehovah has, by that binding of the heart, taught me his ways. Enough that if you lift me from Joss and drop me in Saudi Arabia, I will plant a church that will prosper. So, there is no fear of, if, if I go somewhere else now, will this thing work? No, except if I doubt the hand of the one who has made me. That's why God will rather make you before he gives you. Because when he makes you, what he wants to give you will come out of you naturally. Thank you, dear. Look at this. I need to finish this. Take me back to that scripture. Psalm 34. Let's finish our process of trust. Somebody shout, I trust you, Lord. Come on, shout it like a believer. I trust you, Lord. Verse 9, oh fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. The young lion, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But what? They that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. 11, 12, and 13, and ooh. Let's stop, let's stop at verse 15. Come, you children, hearken unto me. And I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Verse 12, look at this. What man is he that what? That desireth life and loveth what? That he may see God. That means you want to live long and live well. Keep your tongue from evil. Keep your lips from speaking guile. Verse 14, what will happen? Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Verse 15. What happened there? The Upon the righteous and his ears. Listen to this. I'm going to break this down on Tuesday. But one of the things you must know is that innocence is a defense in the spirit. Don't ever let Satan get your hand to do evil because people have done evil to you. Don't. Innocence is a spiritual weapon of war. If you stay innocent, you trigger the Lord to fight your battles. The moment you set out to fight for yourself, in that day, you disengage the Lord. Abigail saved David by one sentence. 
she said to him we know you you wore only the war of god don't let this fool make you stretch your hands and shed blood on your own account it's a good place to close that means if you set out to war let it be god's war if it's your war if god will not fight let me die listen to this that's why every time you find a righteous man he's more willing to defend the cause of the poor the broken the needy than he is willing to defend his cause listen to this david who ran an army one man walked out and was looking at david after such a betrayal by absalom and the man was insulting david joab said excuse me sir let me not kill him and then you say i disrespected you just leave me first what's even joab i don't know abishai abishai said excuse me sir sir let it not be that I disrespected you just say go now let me pin this bastard on a tree he said one shot sir i will not do it twice <laughs> david said leave him paradventure the lord will hear his cursing and have mercy upon us or do we even know that it is the lord who has sent him david that cannot see israel insulted the same david we, you will heap insults on him and david will take it but when david sees the cause of god if you rise against the nation of the Lord, if you rise against the kingdom of God, the zeal of the Lord overtakes David and he can pin you to a wall. You know, there was a manner in which we were taught love that it damaged our ability to fight on God's behalf. Listen, the self-control that comes in love is that self-control that can take anything done to me but if you touch the name of the lord you see this plateau it's, it will be too small for us you know when i talk like this you know you know that they say matter that is boiling in my heart you touch the heritage of god the things i can take they have not told you yet you see you can touch me you can rob me. You can insult me. I've, I'm used to it. People have called me many things. I hear the things and bless them. Sometimes when I'm greeting people, if they know what I know, that they said, if they see me coming in one direction, they'll look for a thousand ways to flee. And compassion won't let me. I'm loving them. I'm hugging them. And I'm not hugging them and saying, because I'm not saying anything. The love walk in me is giving excuses as to why they do what they do. But if you touch the Lord, you touch the heritage of God. Let me tell you something. I can separate from my biological father. Tango is dead. I can separate from my biological father for the name of God. Look at mine. And it's in the Bible. When it comes to zeal and passion, nothing should compel your zeal higher than the name of Jehovah. Nothing. Jesus was not the high priest. He was not the chief priest. I mean, he was not the high priest in the temple. When he weaved Cain and flogged them out, it's the zeal of my father's house. They reviled him. He did not answer. They scorched him. He did not open his mouth. It was not because of the absence of power. It's because if it is directed at me, love requires that I take it. If you direct it at the kingdom, so Proverbs 3, 5, 6, Seven and eight, and we close again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
I told you to study Jeremiah 29 before today's service. Job said, Though he slays me, yet I will trust him. Job said, Though he slays me, yet I will trust him. I read that scripture in Psalm 36 so that you can see. Sorry, in Proverbs 3 so that you can see. That the discipline of the father is with the son that he loves. The discipline of the father is with the son that he loves. I close it this way. The will of God is good. The intent of God is good. The purpose of God is good. Sometimes the method that God is compelled to use does not feel good. But if you know that God is good, you will trust him and go through the methods looking for his face. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. And I told you on Tuesday, God had just killed the prophet that told them they would spend two years and sent the prophet that was going to say to them, that they are going to live 70 years in captivity. Mamana, how do you explain that the goodness of God would rather have you sp spend 70 years in captivity than to have you spend two years in captivity? Somebody say God is good. But let me explain the goodness of God to you. There would have been no Esther if there was no 70 years. There would have been no Daniel if there was no 70 years. No Sedak Misak Abednego if there was no 70 years. No Nehemiah if there was no 70 years. So 70 years was not only time for them to pay for their sin. 70 years was time for God to exalt them and establish his kingdom above the nations of the earth while they thought they were in captivity. And guess what? In those 70 years, there were not only Daniel, Sedax, Esthers. There were several other Jews who bowed the knee and never understood the reason for the 70 years. So it's not about the trial. It's about the posture of your heart. You can choose to be a Mordecai or you can bow the knee. You can choose to be an Esther or bow the knee. You can choose to be a Daniel or bow the knee. And while that was happening on this side, at home, God was raising Zerubbabel's son of Shealtiel. God was raising Joshua's the son of Josedek, so that he can rebuild the heritage that Israel lost. Because in the end, there'll be nothing missing and nothing broken. So that by the time they were returning to Israel, he said, how many of you have seen this temple in her former glory? Is it not now in your eyes as nothing? But be strong, Joshua. Be strong, Zerubbabel. Be strong, the rest of people, and walk. Because the glory of this that house. I told you, God will never restore to what it was. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former. Listen to me. If the will of God becomes plain before your eyes, trusting God will be nothing you need to think about. But it is not trust if you know. If you know, it is not trust. If you understand completely, it is not trust. But if you saw what God was building, you will depend on him totally. So we reckon. 
that the sufferings of this present times are not worthy to be compared with the glory we reckon is not we know we reckon is that we have forced our hearts to understand that there's a glory even though we have not seen it we trust the god who has taken us by the hand listen to me 2024 cannot be like any other year in your life god is about to restart you but he's renewing your wine skin He's renewing your thinking. You are worthy of every promotion God has promised you. You are worthy of every upliftment God has promised you. You are worthy of every showing forth that God intends to do by you. And maybe what is delaying you is that your soul has not come to comprehend and accept that it is concerning you the Lord speaks. Lift up your hand for a moment and say to God, I trust you. Say to God, I trust you. I trust you. I will trust in you. Always. Oh, ancient of days. For you are the rock of the age. I will trust in you. Always, we don't have the time, but say it again. I will trust in you. Always, oh, ancient of days, oh, ancient of days. For you are the rock, for you are the rock of the age. I will trust in you. Oh, say it one more time. I will trust. I will trust in you always. always. Say your oh, ancient of days. Always. Oh, of days. You are the rock. For you are the rock of the age. I will trust in you. Lift up hands all over this room. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today we stand before you. And we ask that every iota of mistrust that comes either because of our experience, our feeling of insufficiency, or unanswered prayer, as we stand right now in your presence, Lord, Take away the pillar on which that thing stands. Let it crumble before our eyes. And I decree over you that this week you will taste the goodness of God. I will tell you why that decree is necessary. It is upon the strength of that testing that you will declare excellent is your faithfulness. That this week will be the week of the record. It will enter the record of your life. That the God who has called you is faithful. The Bible says Sarah judged him faithful. Who has promised. I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is the week when you will learn to judge him faithful. And beyond your experience. The Lord will leave a taste of his goodness upon you. That you will know. That the one who has stretched forth his hands to call you is the one who sustains you till the very end. I bless you with the blessing of the Lord. And I ask that the strength of the Lord sustains you now and forever. In Jesus' name and everyone shout amen. Amen. One more time shout, I trust you Lord. Ah, I I, I want to hear faith in it. I want to. I want to hear faith in it. I want to hear faith in it. I want to hear faith in it. Come on, one more time. Shout, I trust you, Lord!